Welcome to the Canon Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Darius, and today we are joined by iconic track stars and sisters, Mickey and Lisa Barber. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Thank you for having us. I'm not not even going to lie to you. Super excited for this. I'm excited for all the podcasts that I do, but this one in particular, I mean, when I go to do my research, you know, I find like a couple bios and boom, Mm -hmm. I'm good. It was unlimited stuff with you guys. Almost overwhelming. Usually at the jump, I like to, you know, do like a little resume. Mm -hmm. Way too long. That'll take 10 minutes to do that. So (laughs) we'll just go through it as we do. But I feel like as I was doing the research, I was becoming starstruck (laughs) as I did it. But okay. special right now. Okay. I, I, you know, maybe I'm hyping up enough too much. So go ahead. And, I mean, let's go ahead and separate because th- these are twins. So yes. Which one's Mickey? I'm Mickey Barber. And I'm Lisa Barber. Okay, guys. So let's kind of get into the, uh, the background. Where are you guys from? Mm-hmm. We're we both from Montclair, New Jersey. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. Now kind of talk about growing up and how you guys got into track. Okay. Growing up, we had an amazing neighborhood, an amazing childhood. I think we had about 10 All-Americans on our block that went to Division One schools. So your, your neighborhood was just stacked. It was lit. stacked. It was lit. Yes. So, yeah, we had the most amazing kickball games. Uh, Street races. Tag. Bosca- basketball. Football. Uh, double Dutch. So we, we were always active as kids, and we played softball when we were in middle school. And then uh, we started running track in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't really know what we wanted to do. We know we wanted to do something extracurricular, so we would tried everything, and then we were like, we like track. And then we just stuck with it. And by our senior year, we were national champions, and we had the choice to go anywhere in the country to go. Mm-hmm. We chose University of South Carolina. Gamecocks. All right, we'll jump into that in a second. Oh, yeah. And why I have a problem with that, but just oh, one second. Okay. One second. Oh, wait, okay. But in high school, I was a national champion. Uh, she was a national. We both were national champions. Uh, we broke all the state records. I had the state record for 21 years, and uh, we just tore it up the whole time. No, no, you, you, by all means, like listen. This is why I tell people on this podcast beforehand. I meant to do it before with you guys. Mm-hmm. Don't be modest. Go ahead and share everything. Oh. I mean, the podcast. We're, we invited you for a reason, so don't okay. don't hold back. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well, yeah. no, wait a minute. I don't. I don't have this. I never had the state. Um, the state record. Oh my bad. <laughs> just no. Bad. Oh, okay. She did, but um. I was a 100, 200 meter national champion. So. Okay, you know, mm-hmm. just this small little thing. So, yeah. so talk about like, because I mean, obviously, freshman year to senior year, like you said, you became national champion. Mm-hmm. Like, you guys are a big deal. How do you guys handle those like expectations at such a young age? You know, we didn't really have any expectations on us. Like, we nobody, we didn't even know we were that fast. So our freshman year, they're like, "You guys are fast. You just ran a 60 second in the 400." I'm like, "What, what does, does that, that mean?" mean? You know? <laughs> I didn't, we what? didn't know we were fast, so. We just stepped on the track, and then. We just kept getting better and better. And we were hungry. I was always like, oh, no, I got to be better. Oh, she beat me. Oh, I, I hate losing. We all. We Mickey's, like, the worst. I'm a sore loser. I don't She's care. very much a sore loser. I am, too, but Mickey is, like. More so? Oh, yeah. yeah. So. I, hold on. Funny story. I remember, our, you know what I'm about to say. I already know. Freshman year in college, and we were all at my um, teammates' Oh, I thought you were talking about freshman year of high school with the girl, and I was like, get her. She was beating us from Patterson. Oh, not that one. Oh, sorry. Well, another one. This is. Go with, I start with the high school one. Okay, you go for it, because I forgot. So we were racing. It. We were racing. The, um, it was the sectionals meet, and it was me and Lisa, and it was a girl from Passaic in, in the middle of us. And she was beating us, but I was like, Lisa, get her, while I we were running. I remember that. I was like, we can't. Lose. I was when like, she won, did she, she just beat. say that? I think we both beat her, but like, I, I knew that she was coming. I was like, Lisa, get her in mid race, mid race. <laughs> <And then laughs> we beat, but I remember I yelled it out during the race. So yeah, I don't like losing. Yeah, and I'm gonna make sure we win. She's pretty competitive. I'm like, all right, chill. Hold on, classic game of chicken fighting. Remember that in the pool? In the yeah. pool, remember yeah. that chicken fight when you're on someone's shoulders? So you know, I thought, oh, let's chicken fight, make and. I'm tearing her up. And Lisa she's, was like really fighting me though. Like, hold on, that was that was a real slap. No, it wasn't a slap. Yes, We're it chicken was. fighting, so it's no slapping. I was just beating her, and she was getting so mad. I'm like, it's I didn't a think game. she was really gonna like beat me, beat me. Like, hold on, you were aggressive. See, <laughs> it's chicken fighting. Hello, like this is um, a game. I didn't want to. Yeah, I yeah. Got she mad. she got real mad. Kind of, I'm like trying to uh, fight a little bit. Yeah, she got my check. Kind of tried to fight me for real, like. <laughs> Easy. You know, that's what I kind of wanted to ask you guys about, like, the competitive nature of your relationship growing up. Like, iron sharpened iron. Like, how was that? Because I know siblings in general, there's that, there's a rivalry already. Oh, yeah. But being twins, that's got to add another level. I mean, we fought. We fought, like, real fist fights till we were in high school. And, and then, then we'd be like, hey, you want to go to the store and get something? All right. All right, cool. <laughs> we'd have, like, 
<laughs> crazy fights. And then wasn't that crazy. Uh, no, right. One time when I hit you with that clog and it went out the window and then you got cut, like yeah. we really had like a broken window in our house. Like <laughs> we lied. I think I, I just launched it at her. Just told my parents like maybe two years ago. Yeah. It's like what happened? Two to years that? ago. Seriously. She has a scar on her leg. Like you I might need stitches. Sta- you might have needed stitches for that. I definitely needed stitches, but I didn't want to get in trouble. Yeah. Wow. No, of course. So, that. so yeah, yeah, no, we fought all the time. But then it was like we can fight each other, but no one else can fight oh, us. No. Oh no! Oh, I got yeah, you. Like, well, how did that translate to like you know like your athletic performance? Like seeing someone run this time, did it make you want to do like better in this sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think we had a, a healthy competition. Like we. We always had a healthy competition. Even, um, I think being twins helped us even be better friends to other people because yeah. we share a lot and we're used to sharing. So I kind of want everybody to win and and um, I want to see all my friends do well. But I know how to like, okay, we're competing. We're competing right now. But then I afterwards. I know you on the track. Who yeah, is that? Who, I don't know her. Yeah. But then afterwards, like, oh, you want to go to something? Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. cool. A lot of people can't separate that. Like, if you beat them on the track or football or whatever sport they play, they're like, they're not I hate right. them. It's like, oh, well, like this was just a, oh, okay, it's like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's a good mindset. kind of keeps you like, it's a healthy mindset because yeah. you know, it can eat at you doing yeah. that off the field. But, yeah, so that high school career, very successful. You get recruited to a lot of different schools, yeah. and you guys choose South Carolina. And now, before I, yeah. you guys talk about why, mm-hmm. my problem with that is I, I went to UGA, so go dogs. Okay, okay. South SEC. Yeah. I mean, no, 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 I mean, it's SEC, like, good for you, but also, like, I, you know, I grew up, you know, learning to not, like, the game cops. I thought you were a, went to Clemson, Clemson or like, something. I was like, Clemson, okay. But no, 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 no. That's, it's matter. not, like, super bad, but at the same time, man, dude, oh, yeah. the South Carolina fan uh, fan section, man, like, they, Out of hand. they oh, talk yeah. trash. They do. They totally talk trash. We do, but we back it up, so. Ho, ho, we back it up on the track. On the track, absolutely. A couple football. Yeah. We, we, we had a couple football. players, football players. Basketball, you know, we had... Yeah, no, you guys got, I mean, the women's basketball team Come right on, now. Dawn Who, Staley, hello. Dawn Staley, she's no, Love no joke, but yes. what, what led to that decision, going to South Carolina? Coach Fry. Coach Fry, he's, he was like, he's one of the best recruiters ever, yeah. I would say. Coach Fry Coach was Fry, there. Yeah, he got us there. And um, we had the choice to make any, we had any choice, actually, but mm-hmm. we never even came to the West Coast. I we like, definitely think if we would have came to Cali, we might have been either a, Trojan. Mm. I think we would have went to USC. I think we would have went to USC over UCLA. Or okay, so actually, so actually, that's another thing I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, so South, at South Carolina, they say USC, but the real USC is out here, no, no, right? No, 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 no. No, no. no. We we're the, the real, real USC. USC. We were the oldest one. Yes. Okay. Right? Like, so I'm just saying, we got to roll with it. But something happened. Like, what is it? Like, uh, there's a reason why they're the real USC. Like, no, they're not. The, we are because we, we were are. here first. Right. But then the University did. of South Carolina was built first. You're right. Well, I can settle that I argument think. right there. But something, but they they had some backup to why. Maybe because they're kind of better. No, it was oh. something that we, they proved it a long time ago. But we're hey, still the real USA. We're still the real USA. Okay, like, I'll okay. give it to you guys. We're going with that. I'll, I'll give it to you guys. We we'll talk about that college experience. Obviously, a lot of success there too. Mm-hmm. Now, South Carolina, it was amazing. I mean, we we had a great team. We were the uh, first team ever to win our NCAA championship while we were there at for the, the school entire school in 2002. Mm-hmm. And um, we we our team worked hard like our women both men's and women's but like our mm-hmm. women's team like we pushed each other we had like the top recruiting class and we came in mm-hmm. and uh, I got second my freshman year at um, NCAA's and I had uh, twenty one All American titles and five NCAA titles and I held the SEC record all the way up until last year so Lisa sixteen time All American uh, five time NCAA champion but. I'll be honest. I, w- I didn't really push myself that hard in college. Oh, I was a dog in college. Mick was a dog. So I actually did uh, on the podcast I listened to before. You, there was a story about the 2002 national championship. You were injured, right? Yeah, yes. I was in the stands in the cast. So this is when you stepped up. This is like your change in your career. She it was. Up. That was my. That was like you know what? I was actually mad at Coach Fry. Well, Tell a lot. Well, <laughs> I, I, Coach Fry wasn't expecting me. He's like, oh, just go out there and get a point. I said, a point? Like, oh, just, he's pep talking the other. I don't even know if he knows he did this, but he's pep talking the other girls. And it's like three of us, we're all in the final. He's like, so-and-so do this, so-and-so do that. He's like, oh, Alicia, just go out there and get a point. I was like, oh, oh, bet. bet." Like, (laughs) and that just, I don't know, it just changed my mind. Then I ended up, like, becoming uh, the NCAA runner-up, and I PR'd by two seconds Mm -hmm. in 
Then it was like, wait a minute, that's not Mickey Barber. That's her twin Lisa Barber. What's she doing in the 400 meters? Yeah. She didn't even run the 400. She ran the 100. Yeah, I didn't even. But it's just something clicked. And then, so I thank Coach Fry for that, too. And Coach Brown. Because Coach Fry believed in you because you were like, I don't want to run the 400. I run my 100 meter runner. Yeah. Did Coach Fry, Coach about? Brown, Coach D, Coach Sargent, Coach Alden, Coach Shaw. Like, they were, they all had, like, a special um, place I feel like in everybody's uh, athletic career at USC. So, but that's what kind of changed that changed my um, my mindset. And I was like, yeah. oh snap! Hey, maybe if I push myself a little bit, I'm kind of good. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna be the Olympic champion. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break the world record. Yeah, this she's year. Like, super confident. Back then, I already knew. Like, I got this in the bag. Like, I already won NCAA's. I remember I bet somebody ten thousand dollars that I was gonna run forty nine. Yeah, I bet Maurice Green. He's like, no, you're not. I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, I didn't run it, but well, it was a good bet. <laughs> Come on, I really thought I could. Confidence. I mean, yeah, you had to have that Come mindset on. to be Confidence successful at that level. Hello. Mm-hmm. And also, I don't think a lot of people realize two seconds off of four hundred is insane. It was That's it a was, long time. It was a, a big jump. I almost fell out the stands watching her because I was in the cast and I like <laughs> fell through a little. I fell through a gate on the stand. I'm like, "That's my sister," because she was coming and then she just went past everybody and right at the end. Um, I forgot her name. She she got Allison over like Beckford. Allison Beckford, and it was like she was supposed to win. Everyone else, Lisa wasn't even in the. I'm bar. telling you, they were like, oh, just is she, where'd Who, she come wait from? Wait a minute, that's tough. That's Lisa. Yeah, yeah. That was I it. remember coming around the curve like, oh snap, I'm kind of I'm kind of up there. Like I was looking at because I was in lane three, so I was kind of in the back. But then I just had this burst of energy. But that you know what? That was a changing point. Where like I was like, you know what? It's all up here. Got to believe in yourself. Yeah, I've been a believer. I've been a believer. Yeah. Since. <laughs> so now you guys are both big believers, that big confidence boost. Well, tra- Nikki's still like. Gosh, she has to catch up to my confidence. Over the top. But, Hello. You know. Well, you know, again, the, the high mindset, yes. uh, which helped you accomplish at the highest of levels. Yes. Now, the transition from college, obviously, you, you achieved as much as you possibly can in college. Mm-hmm. And then transitioning to, you know, the higher levels, yeah. world championships, both, both have medals. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, you, that was a lot. I'm share some stories because it, it's oh, insane. Okay. I'm like looking at all this and I'm like, well, actually, I'll, I'll say more later, but you go ahead. Okay, well, the transition from college to um, professional, it wasn't like the normal way. Well, Mickey was, she had got injured. She's still in the cast. Mm-hmm. And um, then I wanted to run, I was a 400 meter run. I just got, I just got a. Uh, gold medal world championship in the 400 meter relay my teammates were Sonia Richards Demetria Washington and Gerald Miles Clark but then I was like cool I like this but my passion is like a, the 100 and the 60 meter and 200 meter so then um I switched coaches from coach Fry then moved to Raleigh North Carolina and that was that was a different um ex- experience mm-hmm. but Okay, yeah, that was a different experience. But then um, when I first got there, it was like, whoa, this is hard. Like, this is – if I don't do good after this, I, I, made, I called it my make it or break it year. If I don't do good after this, and I'm just not good enough. And you have to be realistic with yourself when you're becoming a professional athlete because it's, it could take up a lot of your time. So I gave myself that year in 2005. If I don't do well this year, make the um, U.S. team or something, then, then I'm going to quit. I'm just – it's Okay. And I did, and I became a U.S. champion and a world champion. And, again, that was another, like, um, and I, I just rededicated myself. I was like, you know what, I kind of gave, I was like a C plus B uh, student athlete in college. So taking it to the next level, I was like, you know what, I'm going to put in an A for effort. Like, really, I'm going to really buckle down, watch what I eat, journal everything. I'm going to get my sleep. I'm going to study, like, all these things. I'm going to be organized, like, all these things that I said I'm going to do. And that all transferred over onto the track and off the track. So that um, really taught me a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. And then once I did that, I was like, dang, this was kind of easy. Maybe if I just kept doing that. Kind of easy. That's insane. I mean, world champion, what events? Let the people know. So I'm a world champion in the 60-meter dash, a world champion in the 4x100-meter relay, and a uh, world champion in the 4x400-meter relay. All right, I'm a, I'm a, Mickey. Well, uh, well, I'm an Olympian in the 400 meters and a world champion in the 4x100-meter dash. But I made five world championship teams. So, Same here. Yeah, and uh, with me, when I came out of college, I was hurt. The doctor said I was never going to run again, and I didn't believe that. 
So of course you did. She didn't tell me they said that until like I just two told years her this ago. last I mean, year. a couple of years, mm-hmm. but it, I didn't think about that. And I remember when um, I got out, when I got out my cast, my foot was dangling, and I was like, oh, I'm going to the track. What is this, 2002, or is this when you got injured? No, I had two Six. surgeries. I had, two th- oh, okay. I had surgery in 2003 when I graduated. I had a stress fracture, and then I was telling them, like, something's wrong. And they're like, no, it's not. And they're like, oh, something is wrong. You need another surgery. You're like, what? So then I got another surgery, and then that's in 2005, and they were like, okay, you're going to have a limp for the rest of your life. And then I was limping, but I didn't know that, so I'm at the track, and I was dragging my foot. I remember. I just remember Lisa was like, I was like, how do I look? She was like, um, you look great. great. I just felt her face, but <laughs> it was so I was like, bad. All right, good. You say I look bad. But I her like, face said everything. But then that, that year, um, we didn't train together. We never really trained together until 20. No, we trained together tw- two years in our life professionally. That's a long time. I've, I don't know why, but we never trained together. So um, mm-hmm. when I started training, I just came back. And then in 2006, I made the U.S. Championships. I felt really good, but um, I came back. That's when I signed my first Nike deal, and I was with them for seven years. And then I made teams, kept it going. We've had, like, ups and downs. We moved a whole lot of places. Yeah. And then we came to L.A. I came to L.A., and then I've been here for, like, a decade now. Yeah. And it's like, do She's I She's definitely here? an L.A. girl. I am, but I don't feel like I live here. It's like I'm still visiting places. But I do live. No, I kind of feel the same way. I've been here about three years. But we'll we'll talk more about the move and the transition in a second. I'm still trying to focus on some of this, these accolades. I know. So uh, throughout this career, I mean, again, you win the world championships, you know, Mm -hmm. make an Olympic team. What, like, out of that success, what is one of those things, or like throughout that whole thing, what is the most rewarding, whether it's an experience, moment, accomplishment, what what stands out the most to you? It could be more than one thing. Honestly, it's not, not, it to me is like the comeback. Because I never feel like I've done enough. I don't really feel like, oh, yeah, I never feel, I never have been comfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to do more. You got It's always that, like, pressure on your back that people don't realize. So, to me, it's not really the big meets. It's like, okay, I came back from this injury that I thought I wasn't going to come back from. And I do that, like, every year. And it's like, I still got it. Still something in there. So, to me, just having that faith that you can come back from anything. So, it's not just, like, to me, uh, Pan American Games, uh, championships that was a long time ago 2007 but that's what another breakthrough because I wasn't even really supposed to be there or run that fast and I broke the record and it was a lot of adversity that I was going through and I just blocked all that out and I did it and then that set me up for world championships that year they were like oh and then I was able to be on the relay and be in position and and make a lot of money that season from that one race that I wasn't going to run and I ran so Mm -hmm. it's so many different times where it's like Oh, my season's over. Then it's like, no, it's not. Mm-hmm. You're still here. Oh, you hurt your head? Oh, okay, yeah, that was last year, though. Now I'm back. So it's like the fall down nine times, get up ten type of thing. So kind of embracing the grind, but also proving people wrong oh, along proving that. proving people wrong part Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I could yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say, like, the whole, well, okay, my most memorable moment um, was me winning the 60-meter indoor um World Championship. That was my first individual title that I won. And it, at the time, it was the third fastest time ever ran. So, so right after that, I just knew, like, oh, I'm breaking this world record. Like, it was so close. I ran 7.01. I think the world record was 6.92 at the time. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, my gosh, I was right there. And it was so smooth. But I just I hurt my Achilles after that. And um, – but that was my another breakthrough moment for me where, like, okay, I can, I can do it. Like, whoa. And there was a lot going on during that time. And I didn't really get to – I didn't really even know what I did like, or get to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, when I look back over my career, and, of course, there's so much more I wish I could have done or, or like, man, why didn't I – I don't know. But I enjoyed the whole experience. Just a lot of people don't know when you, when you run track, you're, a lot of your meets are overseas. So you're seeing all these beautiful countries. You're meeting all these different people. Um, you're on a plane like – well, the structure of the meets have changed over the years. But, I mean, seriously, you can be in one week. You can, you can be in Russia. Then you can go to China. Then you can go to Paris. Like – so you, you just had to get used to, like, um, just traveling a lot and, 
and just just taking in the moments and just be ready to go as soon as you get off that plane. Mm-hmm. And um, you have to adjust. Track feels about like learning how to adjust as well because we're outside a lot. Where you got just to the weather, time changes, and um, just different things. So the whole experience of just um, being a professional track runner was was pretty doggone cool. I would say. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to like kind of look back and see all the experience you got. And you, you mentioned it, like the, the bunch of traveling that oh, like yeah. the, where track takes you is it kind does. of amazing. Did, People don't realize that. Were you able to take a, a lot? I mean, I know a lot of times, you had, like you said, you had to focus, but were you able to take that in? Like I did. I know I did. I don't know about I did. Um, oh, well, LaShinda Demas, she was uh, well, she went to South Carolina as well, world champion, um, Olympic American gold, record. American record holder. So we would, and she went to South Carolina as well, and we traveled together. So... For two years, like, I didn't really, I was, like, super dialed in. I didn't go out the room. I would just go to the meets. But then when when she came, we were like, wait a minute. Hold on, let's go to the stores. Let's go, you know, just get outside a little bit. And I was like, man, these every these places are beautiful. Like, literally that, um, you know, you work hard, but then you also have to take it in because you may never – get a chance to to do that again to where like you know you're in paris every summer you're you're, you're sitting, in monaco you're in monaco like these Washington. are places we we compete that that was just it came normally that you i'm mm-hmm. glad i did take that those um moments to enjoy where i'm at and mm-hmm. embrace it and with my friends there was a lot of us over there and we we all became friends and it was like okay don't go you know don't travel i mean um don't go walking around too much, like two days before the meet. But you know, sometimes you we know what to do. We know how to balance that out. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed it. Continuing on that again, staying on like this mm-hmm. elite level, mm-hmm. you run with people that kind of like are just like well recognized, uh, you know, amongst whether it's globally or at least in America. Yeah. Or, talk about some of the other legends. I mean, you guys are legends yourself. I want to preface oh, that. But great legends. But you guys have run with the best of the best. Any cool stories from that or just some names you want to drop? Um, I would say a story with, with Usain Bolt. Okay, yeah. We were, in, um, we were in Zagreb, Croatia, and he was at a table by himself, like roped off. He had the red ropes, and he was just sitting there. I'm like, oh, he's, he's over there, you know. He was like, Mickey. I'm like, he's like, come here. I was like, okay. He's like, I'm bored. I, why am I by myself? I was like, oh, I thought you were over here in your little kingdom palace. He was like, no, I like people. I like hanging out and stuff. I'm like, cool, because most people, they want to sit over by themselves with their sunglasses. I'm like, you can't sit here. I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know, if they could have, they would. But no, he was like, no, I like people. I like talking, you know. And then um, he, I was like, you probably got a helicopter hovering outside <laughs> your window or something. I'm being funny, because we're on the same floor. And I'm like, all right. And then I was playing. And I was like, let me see what your room looks like. His room was like a palace. I was like, how? I was like, I'm right over there. Your room is here. But he had like this crazy room. It had levels. It was a whole nother room from my, my room. But I'm like, it can't be that much different. It was, was. It was. And I was like, oh, see, he lives, he lives on a whole nother level mm-hmm. than like, one time he'll come in and like, a slew, a flew of a slew of cars is coming through like bolts in there, and he comes out like it is bolt. And they're like, why? Because he's bolts. That's why. Mm-hmm. But he's one of the nicest guys, one of the most down to earth guys. He's not. I mean, he, of course, you got to be cocky, but he's he's a good guy, and I I respect that about him because he mm-hmm. could be. Some people that are, don't have half the accolades they have, he has. They'll just. He's like, no, hey, let me stop and say, hey, what's going on? I like that about him. So the fact that he knew who you were and was, like, willing to have a, a conversation, he wasn't above you. Or, I mean, like, no, I at mean, least he didn't act like that. No, he, we've always been cool. He always, we've all, he's always known us. We've always been cool, like, every time I see him. But sometimes when you go from okay to, like, super celebrity, people change. He mm-hmm. never changed, nope. ever. Like, when he was at the top of the top, I told you he was roped off. He could have been like, no, I'm roped off. I'm good. He's like, no, come, come eat. Like, yeah. I want to talk to people. I don't have to be above, even though I am. But I'm, I'm cool. I respect everybody out here. We're good. So I like that about him for doing that. Yeah. We, we went with Allison, Felix, Carmelita Jetter, um, Sonia, Sonia Richards Ross, uh, Gail Devers. It's we've had 20 years of like the greats. Mm-hmm. You know, from I've been on. We've been on teams and teams, and the fact that we really know these people and train with them, see them, and, and hang out with them, it's cool. And it, it's a different experience being a track athlete because you're overseas. And when you're overseas, you're a celebrity. Yeah. And it's not like, 
over here is like you're a celebrity. No, you're a celebrity overseas. And then when you come here, it's like, wait, what do you do? Well, you run track. Wait, what is it? It's like, hold on, you don't know? So overseas, they're like, Mickey. And I was like, yay. But here you're like, who, what? So it's, it's different. And then you can see the whole entire world. Like, I'm really in Monaco. I'm mm-hmm. really running at the Crystal Palace. I'm really in Paris. I'm really in Sweden. And it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Or it's like, it's totally different than... No one can understand unless you actually do it or come. Like, you guys got to come to a Diamond League meet. Yeah. You ever been to a track meet overseas? Not overseas, come no. Come on. You got to come. Maybe this year you can do it. Just come to one meet. I'll oh, go with you guys. World Championships is oh, going to be championships is in, in Oregon. Oregon. In Oregon? The yes. world Let's go. We'll, we'll report it. We'll report it. We'll film that. it. When so is it? Uh, in July. Yes. All right, July. This is right. the thing. We're there. Lisa, did you have some stories you wanted to? Um... That when you met the, the, the Prince, Prince of Monaco, Monaco. and y'all. Okay, um, I would say my, like a real highlight was when I met the Prince of Monaco, Prince Albert, and like <laughs> what? Prince Albert. Whoa! When he was like, "Oh, uh, can you and Lashinda Demons come have dinner?" And I'm like, "We're like what? Like okay?" And it it was real cool. He was real cool, and it was I just would never think that that would happen, and all from running track. It's insane where sports can take you. You seriously, yeah. Now you guys kind of like mentioned a little bit because like some of these star people, they've always had this ability, but then they just rise to this other level of fame. Yeah. And there's other athletes who have this ability who are, have the accolades, but then they don't like kind of necessarily make a name for themselves. Mm-hmm. So I guess there's I guess there's multiple levels I want to go into. First is how how do we get more visibility for track? Because I I personally don't think it gets enough love. <laughs> I'm very, we're trying, we've been trying to figure that out for the past 30 years. Like, why is track and field not popular? And then when you see the meets, sometimes it's like, why did you guys, why is it on at midnight after bull riding? Like, you know, yeah. or like the Olympics, like, there's no coverage. Or- yeah, I mean, uh, this past year, like, the 100 meter, like, you know, the, the Olympics that yeah. I feel like there was nothing. And then all of a sudden I start tweet, you know, so-and-so wins the 100 meter. I'm like. When was that? What? Yes. Ooh, like, what? <laughs> I missed that. Right. So I, I don't know. I think, you know. I think the time, they think they need to have um, the timing better on, like, coverage for, like, the Olympics, World Championships, and, Our regular, and meets. regular meets. People think it's, oh, it's every four years. Like, it's no, not. It's, every it's every year. year. Literally, we have big meets making good money. There are meets. There's people breaking world records. There's people hitting these amazing times that nobody knows. And it's like, uh you can break a world record. It's like, she just broke a record. It's like, who? But nobody, nobody would know. And it's like, even if you're an Olympic sport, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you just train for the Olympics every four years. Every, every day you're thinking about winning the next race. And that's what people don't understand. Like, oh, it's just track. You know, we're, we train. We're focused every day about the next race. I don't care if you just want to race tomorrow. You about, you're think, yeah, last, yesterday, you're thinking about winning the next race. That's what people think. You're not thinking about the Olympics right now. You're thinking about that next race, just like that next game, whatever. You don't think about, like, the big things until they get there. Of course, the Olympics is the pinnacle of everything. But well, that's every four years. We're thinking every about four years. U.S. Yeah. championships. We're thinking about this next race to qualify for U.S. championships, to qualify for world championships. Mm-hmm. We're thinking about PRing every time you get on that track to, to be the best. PRing means personal record. Yes, I, hey. I knew. You know, for, the, for people who you know, yeah, you know, so I mentioned PR the other day. Mm-hmm. I forget who I was talking to. I don't know. Someone from, I think, South... No, he might have been South Carolina, actually. And and they're like, what? I'm like, personal record. Mm-hmm. What? Like They're like, we call it PB, PB personal, personal best. best. I don't like that. I don't like PR's PR is better. I was actually going to ask you guys that, so I'm glad you said that. PR. I say PR, yeah. I say PR, too. But I, mm-hmm. I get PB, too. Yeah, I get PB. But that's the thing. We need, we need more visibility of the athletes. Like, you know who I think... This might be controversial. Who made track and field... Like visible for everybody, Shakari. I think like DC Metcalf. That's that's the begin. That's the start. You uh, think Shakari. So? I mean, I know the, like I all the reporting that went on Shikari her. Shakari did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like she because did. one, she's. I mean, she had like you know a bigger personality. People recognized her, and then the mo- you know she like people admired her, and then the mm-hmm. moment you know. She, she took was to another level of celebrity with that. Yeah, exactly. She and really then like did. so like almost infamous, even though she did nothing wrong. Let's be completely honest. But oh. that's up for debate for whoever. But I mean, I don't think she, I mean, 
she broke the rules, but it's like, I don't think she did anything wrong. Exactly. I understand why she did what she did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like, people like, oh, Shikari is never going to be fat. It doesn't even matter anymore. Shikari is a celebrity now. She is, she's surpassed everything the Olympic champion can even think of because she's made it to a whole nother level, which you can't. You can't even make that. You can't even plan that. I don't think she knew what was going to happen. And yes. She did that on her own. That's her personality. That's how she got that. Mm -hmm. So despite some of the negative like backlash, it still overall led to more. What? Way Definitely. more. Definitely. Yeah. a Kanye video. She had well, yeah, there you go. Vogue, like, she had <laughs> Vogue last week. Like, okay, she did what she did. But people, I was around when people, if you smoke weed, your career is done. Over. You, you look crazy. You're getting for two backlash. years you're not coming back yeah so it's like i mean you're coming back but it's like embarrassing and you get written up and then you you lose your nike deal you lose your contract Whatever you get deal. banned for years that's what i'm like no oh, she had a little slap on her wrist mom's all right she, she came she'll back and finished her she'll season. be back yeah she's back she still has a nike deal it's amazing so furthering, you know, more of the visibility of track, do you think, you know, maybe other athletes, because, you know, I mean, if you're okay at basketball, well, okay in a professional sense, you're making millions. Come on. You're mm -hmm. making millions. Mm -hmm. So, like, do you think some of the bigger names, in, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, getting kind of support from them could help push track yes. to the forefront? Yeah, right? You know how people will be on Celebrity Row at the Lakers game and stuff like that, you know, like... We oh, need, that would be cool if, we like, need people stars would be fans. Like, oh, so-and-so, we got so-and-so here at the meet. Like, yes. Yeah, you just see a tweet. You see LeBron right here Bron, in the shade. LeBron, we need you in the building. LeBron, we need we you. We need you in Portland. Front row. Kanye, come on. Come on. AD. This right here. This is the first time world championship has ever been in the U.S. In the US. Like, it's It's, it's total different. This is not your average track meet. World this championships is, is, like, this is it. being at the Olympics. Yeah. It is. It is. The whole world comes here, but now we get to experience in the U.S., amazing. So we need some more uh, fans some and support, like you said, from other athletes, stars, mm -hmm. and better showtime on TV. Can we not showtime, see it at showtime. 2 a.m.? Can we show the Or 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday? Why? No one's home. How about no. prime time? Visibility, again, like mm -hmm. I think showtimes, you know, like when it comes on, air, air times, not showtimes. Mm -hmm. Another thing I want to talk about, and I want to get your experience with it as well, is is a lot of athletes, they can be elite of the elite, mm -hmm. and they're struggling mm -hmm. to, to live. Hello? I mean, we have Olympic athletes who have to door dash on the side. So, I mean, yeah. talk about your experience with living, finances, being as elite as you were. As I am. As you still are, excuse me. As I am. As you are. As you are. <laughs> it's hard, because it's like, it's no respect. It's. You, you train your whole life, literally. Like, I've seen, if you're the top at your top at any, in any field, you're going to get compensated for it. Like, oh, this is the executive director or whatever. And it's like, okay, you get what you're, you get, you get your worth. And as being an athlete or Olympic athlete, it's like, we don't care if you won the Olympics. We don't care if you did all this. We're still going to give you $2. It's like, why? I don't understand it. It's, it's been a struggle ever since we've been going to, uh, these meetings and it's like we need to get more money and I, I don't know like that's why I think I've, I've run for so long because it's like I'm running for a cause it's like this is this is my way of expressing myself and like no we need more visibility we need more backing we need more people behind us because we put in just amount just the same amount of work as anybody else I remember um who was it Blake Griffin he was like, oh, I would, I would never be a track athlete. He's like, this is, this is really hard. Like, I'm sprinting. Oh, this is a super multimillionaire who's been, he plays a sport. Plays, yeah, basketball. Basketball. So why is it, why? Like, we, even all the football players where I train, I train at a lot of facilities like this with football players. And they're like, man, you're really out here working. Like, yep, just still getting these pennies. But it's like... Why not? I don't get it. I really don't get it. That's my and question. And it varies too. from each person. It though. does. So somebody, no. Everybody's not. But it's a, it's a high percentage of track and field athletes that are making below minimum wage. I've honestly been, we've both been blessed to have great deals in our career. Not great. I mean, it's all Decent, relative. Good. But where you can live comfortably. For, but then once those deals go, it's like, it's, it's always like a hustle. It's always a hustle. I don't think anybody's ever really comfortable not true. That, what? You don't think anyone's ever really comfortable? I'm talking about the majority. Of course, I know a lot of people like run yeah. track that are doing well and well off. But the majority of track and field people, 
I don't think they're like, oh, I'm good. I can just train. No, you're like, okay, I got to do this, and I got to hustle here, and I got to go there. You don't think? Majority of track and field athletes. Eh. What? No, okay. Yeah. What do you say? At different points in their life, like, but when they're on, like, no, I feel like they're pretty good. Mm, okay, certain people. We, we just happen to know a lot of people, not a lot of people that do make good money. Mm-hmm. We know them. Then there's a mm-hmm. lot of people like, uh, no, I don't have a contract. I'm getting an equipment deal, and I work at so-and-so. You don't know a lot of people like that? <laughs> what? I'm being honest. How are you being honest? I am. Right? You don't know a lot of people like you've had. I'm saying like top 10 in, in the world or the U.S., like I feel like they're doing, they're doing pretty good. I think nowadays with social media, it's a little bit easier to yeah. kind of get that traction. Kind of like we talked about with Shakari, like this twenty years ago might maybe might not be the same thing, you know? Yeah. No, twenty years ago she would have been banned in. Yeah, yeah. I don't there even you know go. Like we she talked been about banned, that. Like, oh, what? Oh, I yeah, know no. people she, twenty years ago that got banned for for ten. For this would only. not happen at they all. Were Five years one ago. in the world. Yeah. They got banned. The Nike contract was gone. They had to go back and ship ship themselves back and never heard from them again in the sports yeah. world. That would not happen. Would Five not years happen. ago. Yeah, five years ago. The outcome would not be that. So she's blessed. She's special. And like, I'm glad I'm glad it yeah, happened. Yes. Okay. Can we talk about this? Like, let's bring this up. Like what what are we doing here to me? Like, do you smoke weed or not? I mean, do you do you keep it legal or I don't get it? Like basketball you can smoke weed. Yeah. Right? Track you can't or any other sport. So it's just I don't know. Yeah, no, that that's a whole other can it of is, worms. But is. yeah, we'll, let's up. the next podcast. Okay. That's yeah. what we'll do. Right. But Oh, so we can come back? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, <laughs> navigating that, mm-hmm. what what advice would you give athletes as far as navigating, you know, the financial struggle? Mm. You got to have the right people around you. Yes. Because that's what matters. Your agent, your coach, your support system. You got to support your support system because in the sports system has to support you because they're the ones who's in, in control of your career, basically. They negotiate your contract. They, your coach is who you need, who you look to for guidance and stuff. And if you don't have those right people that really have your best interests, you can, in anything, you can go on a whole nother level. Like, what just happened? And I think, honestly, in certain instances with us, like, we didn't know that certain things weren't right for us until it was too late. Like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I would say to, like, ask questions, read the fine print, Make sure you know. And if someone gets mad that you're asking questions, get out of there. That's okay. a problem. Yeah, yeah, you have to be a businesswoman, a businessman. And people think, just oh, just you're, you just run. Like, no, I'm not running. What does this mean right here? How come I didn't get this check right here? How come this is going there? How much percent? You have to ask because they're just going to write it off and say, oh, she didn't check. Let me just slide. Take this. advantage of that situation. Yeah. Yeah. And then a lot of times when they say, oh, you're an athlete, like you don't know how to do anything else or you can't. Be smart. Like, no, No, we're business people. We do the same thing. Like, just because we're talented physically Mm -hmm. does not mean we aren't smart and business-oriented and want to do other things than just be an athlete. That's why LeBron always says, like, I'm more than an athlete. Like, Mm -hmm. just shut up and dribble. Like, no. No. I want. I like politics. I like talking on things. I have an opinion. And Mm -hmm. maybe you might want to listen to me because I just made all this money and I'm a super millionaire and I give back and I do things for the whole community. But, like, why do I have to explain why I need to shut up and dribble? Like, why? I'm I'm one of the richest men in the world. Hello? So I I just don't get that. And it's like... A lot of times, even if I'm in business environments, they're like, wow, how did you know that? I thought you just run track. Like, no, I, I do run educated. track. I, you know, I, I know other things, too. So that's a lot of times with athletes, you get put in this box. Yes. And you can't do anything else. Then it's like, oh, well, why don't we just, just give you these pennies over here because you're just an athlete and like, this other person who's marketing, whatever. Like, it goes like that. So you really have to pick, pick your people wisely. Yes. And, and study and learn and go overboard in anything else that you want to do because they're going to keep you right there. And if yeah. you don't, you're just going to get stuck. And then it's, then it's over. Yeah, and then it's like, I used to. But no, you can do more. You can transition to be whatever you want to be. And I have to tell people that over and over again. Mm-hmm. Like, ask questions. Make sure you know. Learn. Learn. Like, who, who's signing your checks for you? Like, sign your own checks. Because they're like, oh, just sign this. Like, no, I'm asking this question because mm-hmm. we have to learn the hard way. Yeah, so let's actually get into that a little bit more, mm-hmm. the shut up and dribble, mm-hmm. you know. 
putting athletes into a box. I, mm-hmm. I think no one defies that more than both of you guys. You guys like do a lot outside of your athletic, you yeah. know, careers, even more so than what you're doing now. Talk about kind of the hobbies on the side. I mean, I've, I've looked into it a little bit, of course, but go ahead and share with us, okay. you know, what you guys do outside of the athletic realm because mm-hmm. it's a lot. <laughs> well, me, I love to cook. I love to cook. I love interior design. I love, I'm a creative. I don't even call myself, but I'm a creative. Okay. You know, because I'm a creative or creator? I'm a creative. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, I, I love cooking. Like, cooking is something that, like, it it calms me. It it does something. It's one of my passions. And I always wanted to be a chef or, like, have my own show and stuff like that. So now I do a lot of meal preps. I'm always coming up with new recipes. Uh, I love, like, making pretty spaces and stuff like that. So if I could be an interior designer or a chef, that's my other, that's my other thing I do. And, mm-hmm. um... Lisa, she's a, a great jewelry maker. She's a creative, too. Bracelets, know? right? Can you talk yeah. about that a little bit? Okay. Um, I have a jewelry line called The Honey Collection. I started in 2010, and I basically started um, using healing stones because I got into a car accident, and I was in Canada, and then this lady gave me this carnelian stone, and I was like, wow, she just she just gave it to me. And then I started looking up meanings of stones. So from there... Um, I, I lived at Atlanta, in Atlanta at the time, and I made my own bracelets. So when, when I had them on, people were like, oh, my gosh, where would you get those from? I was like, I made them. So that's how I started um, my jewelry line, and it's, it's still flourishing. Mm-hmm. And I use um, a lot of precious stones, hematite, agate, um, onyx, like all, all healing and protection stones. Everything is handmade. So that's still going. I also started a juice company called um, Body Code, and – um yeah that that's going off um fresh juices making myself have um about four different recipes so everything i do here is like pretty much local and um then i also do body cavitation it helps um women or men lose fat around their stomach or whatever body part mm-hmm. they want to do mm-hmm. and we also do personal training yeah so you know we have a lot of different Things that we do. And also, I founded uh, Fearless Minds. I was just about to say, yeah. Fearless Minds. Fearless Minds, Fearless Mind, you know, be fearless, fearless in your journey. So yes. that, was, that became official, official in 2015. Mm-hmm. And we've been to over 250 schools, U.S. And th- that was special to me because yeah. I would say in, um, we started in Jersey City. And uh, we went to these schools. And they were like, man, these kids, they're... They, 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 they did horrend- they did horrendous things, and I'm like horrendous. They're like horrendous. Like yeah. oh, but with us, they were like they were really engaged with you guys, and I, I, they were like normally they're they're quiet. They don't really really, they speak. weren't really speaking. I'm like who Michelle over there? That's my girl. Like he was like I know because you guys really got them to Something engage out. you. So we would do something at the end called uh, face your fears, mm-hmm. and make some make them get up and come do like a little talent show. And so, then too, we were also. If they have a question, a lot of times we'll make them stand up and say their name. And that can be kind of scary. Scary, You, you know, they're in an auditorium public and speaking. public speaking. And a lot of them are kind of shy. And that's why sometimes um, they might act out because you never know what's going on with them. But, and it will be like, come on, come on, get up, get up. And they'll be like, no, then they'll get up. Mm-hmm. And then, like, these, they'll, they'll be, booster. yeah, definitely confident just by making them stand up. And, hey, what's your name? Da, 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 da. And then they'll ask a question. That gave them a sense of confidence just by doing that. Like, they were mm-hmm. finally being seen. And whatever question they ask is being heard. And um, then, as Mika was saying, we'll, we'll do a thing called Face Your Fears. And all of a sudden, this was this was real cool. Like, we found singers, poets, gymnasts. Like, they were really doing (laughs) backflips. What are these, like, middle school kids, high school kids? Middle school, high school. Middle school, high school. It is also um, helped. Yeah, yeah, college. It also helped with some of the questions they're asking. We'll be like, we'll ask, so is anybody, like, say, scared of going to the, uh, the seventh grade? And they'll be like. Yeah, I am. I am really nervous. I'm also nervous because my mom and dad are getting a divorce and I don't know how to like they were like saying like real deep things. So afterwards, like the principal, the principal was like, whoa, I didn't even know they were feeling these things or they're really asking questions and mm-hmm. saying how they feel. And they it, never did that. Before. They never did that before. And they're saying it in front of their peers where I mean, that's a good thing, because a lot of times um, people don't feel heard or they don't mm-hmm. feel listened to so by the end of our fearless mind um tour you know you had 
they're they're not even scared to do anything anymore. They're literally doing backflips. Yeah, one girl, she was um mm-hmm. on the she was about to be expelled or something, and then I, we came back and connected. They were like, "No, she's getting good grades now." Mm-hmm. Like ever since she, you guys came, and she came and spoke on the mic. We were like, "Come up!" And she came and was asking questions. And yeah, they were shocked. They were like, like "Oh, she she would never do this," yeah. and she did. So that was the way we could connect with the kids and yeah. and give them the confidence and let them know that you guys can do whatever you want to do, even if you've done crazy thing like you can always come back and change don't, don't ever feel that you're not good enough so that's mm-hmm. why i said fearless minds because you got to be fearless and that's why you know i'm fearless you know i'm confident so you, mm-hmm. you got to just be your own cheerleader and just go with it yeah. so that's the one thing we want to keep going and um i've been doing a lot of events like uh my grandmother she's passive alzheimer's disease so we do a, a thing called the big ride every my grandmother and my grandfather on my father's side my grandmother mother's side gotcha but my grandmother died 20 years ago. My grandfather died five years ago. Mm. And it, it, it affected all of us. So I was like, you know what? I want to do something special. Yeah. I always said that. And I'm like, I'm going to have a bike ride around my town. We're going to raise money. We're going to create awareness. We're going to do all that. And we did it. And now it's going to be our third year coming up in October. Yeah. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger every year. So things like that for the community. For it's a 10-mile bike ride, too, around town. Yeah. And then afterwards, it's like a little festival. Mm-hmm. So it's growing and growing. We had a news coverage. We had Fat Joe even came. Yep. We had Kenny Burke, who sings, keep rising to the top. top. So next year is oh. going to be even bigger. So it was something I thought of real quick. They were like, Mickey, how are you going to do this? Because I did it in like nine days. Again, I was like, Nick, this is not no, going to work. No, she wasn't. I'm like, come on, we can do it. But I'm always it. there. But I'm like, <laughs> what? She no. does that every time. And then I'm like, we did it. And then we got to keep it going, being consistent. So like you're starting something and being consistent with it is what I'm about, and that's one thing we started. So we have a lot of things going on on the outside of the track and field, and we just want to be better and, and do awesome things and show people that you can do it. Mm-hmm. Just like us right now here at uh, RA Sports Performance, like yeah. we really do coach uh, prospect NFL players. Well, actually, yeah, pro, pro day and, and combine, and yeah. this was awesome to us because we really, we really get to see them, really get to see them grow mm-hmm. and help them and, like, it's not just okay about speed it's about life like guys don't do this or like guys no seriously they're like oh yeah and then the dynamics of us as as women coaching men they're like oh you guys do know what you're talking about like yeah we don't have to play football but like we're gonna show you how to get there we're gonna show you how to cut we're gonna show you how to do all that Mm. and we know what we're talking about and it took them a while to like oh Okay, right. okay, all okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's been that pretty part. cool. That's mm-hmm. what I wanted to go into next because, like, after the athletic part of it, I mean, well, you guys are still athletes, yeah. not taking away from that, but the training part of your career. Yeah. I mean, getting into the field, actually, right before the podcast, before you guys got here, I was talk- talking to Dwight, the, mm-hmm. the owner, yeah. Dwight Ross, the owner of um, One Sports RX. Yeah. And he was talking about you're just like, you guys are so good at your job. And um, I guess, you know, in this field of, of training, especially mm-hmm. professional athletes at this level, Mm-hmm. not many women yes yeah and here you guys are all showing out so talk about that kind of like that experience of entering a, a man's yeah, world it if you will. it's a man's world it's 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 a lot harder when you're actually in it it's it's rewarding but it's like okay we we still got a tough battle to fight yeah, you and have to prove yourself yeah you got to prove yourself every day you just even if the way you look they're like oh you don't know what you're talking about and it's like yes i do and it's like this is that and like Oh, okay. I noticed it. Like, sometimes even men speaking to men, they're going to shake their hand, they're going to look them out, they're going to talk to them. Sometimes people won't even look at us. Like, it's like, oh, you guys are the coaches. Like, hello, yeah. yes, it's us. Like, oh, we didn't. They don't even expect us to have the position we have. So that's what I want to show women and young girls. Like, I always knew I wanted to be a coach. I wanted to coach professional athletes. I, I, I felt like, like, uh, as an athlete or a professional athlete, you should be able to go into that next world and and excel in it. But there's really not a really space for us like that. Okay, in football, you can go into the front office. You can go and be a positions coach. You can go coach for a team. You can make good money doing that. You can be basketball. You can be a developmental coach. You can be that. I know so many people who are developmental coaches who's making, like, crazy money. Like, oh. But then this track is like, eh. You're just a track person. Get $2. Like, why? We help. Bi- Tr- speed is the foundation of every sport. Every sport. Like, mm-hmm. why is it not like a developmental speed performance coach where you have a position? It's like you don't have a place. There's so many athletes. No, it takes a while to get there. It takes a crazy while to get there. But it's like, no, there's so many talented 
people who are experts at what they do but have nowhere to go. And then you're just forced to be like, uh, you just, there's no place for you. So something like this is like, it's needed. Women, we need an out, we need something like this. We need like to know that you can be a professional coach, that you can be, you can coach men, you can coach in the NFL, you can coach combine athletes, you can coach elite people and have that space. So mm-hmm. Dwight gave us this opportunity to Thank do you, that. Dwight. Thank you, Dwight. Thank you. And Fab. Dwight Ross, Fab, you know, um, Andre. Yes. You know, uh, Chantel, this is an amazing place, and it's just going to get bigger and better. And the fact that we have this opportunity, like, oh, yeah. no, look, we really do train professional people. And I and really enjoy it. It's always. Like, I, really I remember in them. college, I wanted to be Denise Austin. You know Denise Austin? The pl- you know Denise <laughs> The Pilates lady. I used to do, I always wanted to be that. I always, you did? I forgot, yes, oh. I did. I knew back then I wanted to be, to be Wayne Dyer. Anybody know Wayne Dyer? Wayne Dyer? You wanted to be Wayne Dyer. Not, I wanted to be a motivational speaker. I wanted to be that guy. Like, everyone's like, Mickey, I wanted to have my... Uh, oh, okay, the motivational speaking part. Who'd you thought I wanted to look like him? I don't know. Like, I'm Wayne just saying. Wayne Dyer is the older white man with a bald head. That's why I was like, you want to be Wayne Dyer? Okay. Yeah, I want to be Motivational Wayne speaker, though. I got all right, you. I got you. Yes, like, back in college, I used to really listen to motivational speeches. I have all these books. It wasn't until recently, Lisa was like, Mickey, where'd you get all these books from? Like, I have them. Like, I really do read these books. I really do. I got all these journals all around with... I remember I wrote like 1075. That was my time. I was running in 100. Like, that's my goal. I wrote that like a thousand times. She's like, uh, what is this? I'm like, this is like, what I'm manifesting in my life. But oh, I was okay. doing that. That was back in 06. Yeah. So I always had that mindset. I always like wrote things down. I always was uh, delusionally optimistic, would you say? <laughs> like, well, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. Delusionally Wait, optimistic. Optimistic. Delusional. Um, Nabi, find, find, mom, Nabi told me that. Nabi was, is this great speed coach. Also, they call him Speed Doctor. He's been coaching the best of the best. I don't know yeah. if he does that right now, but like he said, Mickey, you got to be de- delusionally optimistic. So I was like, you're right. Mm-hmm. And then he used Trump as an example, but he was right because he really did yeah. all that. And he was like, if you would have told us a long time ago Trump was going to be president, we were laughing at that. But he, he really, really did, did, and it was like, oh, he used it. I was like, you know what, you're right. But as a woman, I was like, I really believe I can do this. I really believe that there's a space for us in sports where mm-hmm. you can make a great living, where you can inspire people, where you can make people better, and it's really a place for us. I want to be that. I want to be that coach. Like, Mickey did it. Just like, um, dang, Jennifer, I forgot. She's the um, coach for the, um, dang it, Jennifer King. She's the first positions coach for the Baltimore Ravens. No, don't say that. I know. I don't think that's Jennifer right. King. She's one of the top, one of the best uh, positions coach for NFL. And that's never really, Dawn Staley, like, doesn't really happen like that. Those are my inspirations where, like, I want to be a coach like that. Like, Mickey and Lisa are the, the top speed performance coaches around, even though that's not even there yet. But it's, it's coming. There. It's there. We're that. And like I said, speed is essential in every sport. Mm-hmm. So the faster you are in any sport, the better you will be. And it's not just about speed. It's about strength. It's about mm-hmm. conditioning. It's about eating right. It's about sleeping right. It's about having that mindset, about being flexible. It's about even being able to move, to cut. People think it's just speed. Like, no, mm-hmm. it's, it's everything. You need your whole body to run. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. Like, every tenth of a second counts. So if your hand is not right, if your elbow's not right, if your foot is not flexed, if you're not looking straight, they don't realize what goes into sprinting. That's why when we when we talk to the guys, they're like, man, I hate running track because you can't hide. I'm like, no, you can't. You're exposed. Yeah, when out you, there. <laughs> I don't even when D.C. Metcalf ran, it was like, he's going to run. You beat Usain Bolt. I'm like, no, no he's guys not. Guys don't understand that. He's amazingly speed. fast. But mm-hmm. get him on the track with some track people and watch Finish his last. And he ran fast. He's an amazing athlete. Yeah, he's he amazing. is. amazing. That's how hard track and field is, though. Yes. When you think about it, like, he's. He's a superstar on the on the field. SEC too, right? Yeah, Ole Miss. DK yes. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's amazing. That's why I was like, it's watch how it transfers over on the track. He's amazingly fast. Mm-hmm. But get him in a race with some track people. Another Should, argument for why you guys need more money. Hello? Hello? Yeah. You know, like that. And how track and field is cool. Like, these are great. Oh, and another thing. Mm-hmm. He'll tell you that's why he's so good too. In football. Because... He running knows track. the conditioning of, like, running track and the, the speed and the strength. It helps you. 
So if you can make it through some track workouts, and it's not just on the track, like I said, weight room too. A lot of people think track guys are like, oh, they're small. No, they're no, not. No, they're going to put up 225. Easy. Times. Like, easy. easy. We're, we're, we can put up 225. Now? No, not now. Okay. I, we put up 225, though. Yeah. Seriously. That's insane. Seriously. Like, I think I might try. Give me give me two months. We'll, we'll, right, we'll record back. All right, we'll, we'll come in here. We're we got RX back. here. We'll She'll get back. it. Like, I promise you. you know okay, wait. I've chill, Mick, chill, chill, chill. Even that with Lisa. Lisa will be in practice. And I should be like, Mickey, I don't think I can do it. I'm like, what do you mean? It'll be some crazy weight doing a power clean. I'm like, I know you can do it. She'll get mad at me. I'm like, what are you trying I'm not. to test? Mickey's you? just so like, I, but why do you question yourself? Like, I know you can do it. What did she do? Mm, easy. I'm like, confidence go is into key. It like, sure. I, I don't. When I do something, I don't question if I, she tries to delusionally test optimistic. Me. Delusionally True. optimistic. Still working on. I that. am. Hello, I'm Halle Berry. Like, there we go. Mm. That's my confidence. Delusionally my, optimistic. Mick Yonce. Mm. That's my name I gave myself about 11, 12 years ago. And they, they laugh at me now. I was overseas with Nia Ali. She's the gold, the bronze medalist in the um, 2016 Olympic Games. She has three kids now. I guarantee you next season, watch. She's yeah, Nia Ali's going to show up. But I remember back in 2000. She's going to show up this year probably. She definitely is Let's showing up. See. She's now. had her third child too. Come on. Nia's been doing it. A little mm. shout out real quick. But I just remember we were... Dang, we were overseas somewhere, and it was all three of us. They're all hurdlers. And I'm like, guys, you got to get your Yonce on. I was like, I'm Nick Yonce. And they're like, Nick, shut up. But then that next year, they all became Yonce's. Like, all of them made their, their first team. They got medals. She's referencing that. Beyonce. You know no, what that means. I, 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 just saying that people means. don't know. People know what Yonce means. All right, just saying. Hello. So I keep saying hello. I can't stop. Me I either. can't stop. Sorry. A couple more things I want to touch on right quick before we get out of here. Sorry. No, 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 no. You're good. Not to cut you off, but... Another thing that you guys preach a lot that I mean, so I've done creeping. I had to, to, to learn, creep. but, we'll learn. but mental health is something you guys really put. And that's something that's stigmatized in this. So yes. in, the, in the athletic realm, obviously, I mean, like there's people that's been pushing it forward a little bit more recently. Like um, Kevin Love is one good example. Yes. I mean, talk about the importance of a mental health in your life and then just, you know, everyone's life, essentially. Honestly, people don't I, people don't realize how important it is, especially as an athlete, because you're looking at like, oh, you're just you're just playing, just playing your game. It's not that serious, but like, no, when we go out there, we put, it's like our life is on the line. Like we're serious about it. And with any athlete, like that's what matters. But when people don't really respect what you do as an athlete, it can play with your mind. Even when the basketball players and they're talking to them crazy and the, the fans, like when they want to jump in the stands, like, no, you don't get to talk to me like that because I'm just, I'm not just an athlete. I'm a human. Mm -hmm. Respect what I do. And a lot of times that gets overlooked by being an athlete. And we need that support. We need to know that we do matter mm -hmm. and that even though we're playing a game, like this is our life, this is how we make our living, this our, we're away from our family, we're sacrificing, sacrificing holidays and good times and even childbearing. Like you give your all to the sport and then you don't even have an outlet to really talk about our people. So mental health is, 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 everything in what we do so you need the therapist you need to an outlet to talk to us even football players like you're out there rawr! and then you gotta come home and be nice and gentle it's like you gotta find a happy medium you gotta find somebody where you can let that anger frustration you can talk too crazy your whole whatever and then you come home you gotta be the nice guy people don't know how to balance that and it's like no this is a serious thing even with cte and all that and stuff like we, mental health Without your mental, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, the athletes we just get pushed over, like, oh, they're just they're just doing their little athlete. Like, no, we need help. We need to figure out, like, why don't we make this much money, or why is this, or can someone help us make us feel our best? To where where are these feelings coming from? Where can I put them? Mm -hmm. So it's so important for athletes. It's so important for everybody. Like, you got to get your mind right to to be the best you you can be. I didn't know that. I didn't know how serious it was, and. I'm, I was getting therapy because I'm like, hold on, I, I don't feel right. And I'm like, I felt stupid. And then when I would have these sessions like, oh, this is why I do this or that. And then they hit me like, Mickey, you really do have a lot on your shoulders that nobody knows about. And you smile all the time. And I'm like, am I smiling? Am I really happy or am I not happy? But I, someone just told me like, Mickey, you always got a smile on your face. And I was like, I do. But it's like, do you ever get mad? Like, do I ever get mad? <laughs> yes. And then it's like, I had to balance that out because I'm super friendly. And then I'm, I'm super aggressive too. So it's like, 
it's no medium. And mm -hmm. sometimes we have to really balance that. And I realized like mental health is, is so important. I had to get mine in check. Yeah. Yeah. So you both voice that. Yes. Uh, really right. Yeah. I definitely voice that. And I'm glad that um, mental health has, is, is like, it's cool now. Not saying it's cool, cool. but. It's being de destigmatized a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Destigmatized to where like. So ways you're to not go. crazy or anything and you're not. But I do feel like, okay, you have to take some accountability though. You can't just blame everything on mental health. You can't just say, oh, I just did this crazy thing. Oh, I have mental health. No, you gotta let's take accountability, take for, accountability your for, for sure it and handle them. Yeah, yeah, that goes hand in hand. It accountability, needs mental to be health. Addressed. But like, I'm, yeah, I'm glad it's getting talked about. I'm glad it's okay to say something is wrong. I'm glad it's it's okay to, um, you know, if if you don't feel like doing something right now because you're really stressed out. I don't care what you do, what job you have, or um, what position you play, or whatever. Maybe. People do need more mental health days because this is really a thing. This is really especially when people are sad on. and people need outlets, outlets, and they need days talk. off and you need to express your feelings. You need to have kids feel like they can talk. And um, there's so much like anxiety going on in the world. So I think I'm glad this is being talked about. And and a lot of important people are talking about mental health and showing that that it's okay. And there are resources yeah. to get provided there. to us. Mm -hmm. Like now we have like, oh, okay, oh, I can talk to a therapist. So that doesn't mean I'm crazy, is it? Like, yeah. exactly. no, like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Like, this isn't that so-and-so goes to therapy. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. I'm, gl like, I'm very we, glad about that. We can visibly see that. And we have people like, oh, no, check, your, check in with check yourself. In. Two world champions. Mm hmm they embrace mental health. They, you know, they use a therapist. So I if haven't you're at yet. Home, she hasn't. Okay, well. I know, and I, you know what? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I need, I, I need to. Mine. I haven't used a therapist yet. Okay, but my but point still stands. Though. No, your point my stands. point still stands. I need one though. Okay, and, and we are getting near the end of our time. But yes. one last thing, I promise. So when I was doing research i let my brother know about you guys so he's okay. a big track guy he i mean i ran track as well we both were long distance we weren't doing what, which, what'd you run uh 3200 oh long Ooh, distance long, long. yeah long distance long like distance cross i just cross country and track wow, track okay. was really more of my like conditioning for cross country but oh, gotcha i'm not on your level never right. will be but that's okay 3200 i can't my brother big big track nut and the moment i told him i was interviewing you guys he actually he recognized your names and he was okay. like naming off some things and he just the one thing he wanted me to ask you guys is the hardest event whether you know both personally and, and like like maybe like mm. something that you've done like out of the events that you usually do but then just overall what do you think the toughest would be the hardest so this is I for you cameron 400. 400. the 400 because you can't hide like the 400 is a fast sprint mm -hmm. and like okay the 100 the 100 is really hard too because it's no room for error and it's high high levels of injuries like you you get hurt a lot in the hundred. Everybody that runs the hundred gets hurt. Can't help it. But every, everybody that runs track on it. But then the two hundred is is cool. But that four hundred, I don't care how don't fast care. or slow like, you run it. It hurts. It's when you get hurt. hurt. Yeah. And then like the four hundred hurdles, I was gonna say that. But you yeah. can get on a rhythm and like you kind of you can pay. the four hundred hurdles. It's really hard to be a four hundred hurdle and just as fast as the four hundred. People do it just like Sydney McLaughlin, Dalila Mile. There's a McLaughlin. lot of people. Yeah, Sid, she's a beast. the kid. Not too many people can do that, but I think in a flat out four hundred, it's it's faster. Yeah. Like you can get into a, like a, a rhythm in the four in the four hundred hurdles, like blah 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 blah. But the four hundred is like, oh gosh, oh here we come. The monkey jumps on your back, no matter what. No matter what, I don't care how fast or slow. Like once you get around three fifty, everyone feels that little hint of death, right yeah. there. That last fifteen minutes. Yeah, it's it's pretty brutal. But then that eight hundred. Yeah, the eight hundred. Oh. Eight hundred. You know, I'm going with the eight. Yeah. I'm going with the eight. My brother said if you said anything but the eight or the uh, 400 um, hurdles, you're you're lying. Oh, <laughs> so, okay, so 800, okay. 804. I, I'm not to agree with everything you guys said because I, I mean, I did. A f you want to know what my PR was in 400? Let me guess. Hold on. You're gonna be wrong. I'm slow. So you're like slow, slow, or I'm like slow, slow. Okay, hold on. So I'm guessing. Wait, when did you run this? I need to age. 16. 16. 16. So I'm going with 62. I'm going with. 58. 61. Oh! Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well. Wait, wait, your brother said 800 meters and 400 meter hurdles is the, the hardest? Yeah, that's his, in his opinion. I, I give it I the agree. 800. The 400 800. Meter, meter hurdles is fast. 
I mean, it is hard, but I don't think it's harder than I like the, what you said about the rhythm. That makes sense. Yes, though. because was, a lot of them are like, like the they feel the 400's harder. harder. I'm like, what? What do you mean? You got to jump over jumping over a hurdle. You, run, you almost run as fast as you're doing the 400. Yeah, They're they like, say no, that. No, but you can find your pace. I'm like, I don't know how, but that's what I Because I wouldn't like make it over the hurdle. So. I tried to jump over a hurdle one time. I was like, oh, no. Like, Disaster. <laughs> Ow! Uh, I was slow doing yeah. it. Mm-mm. All right, Cameron, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> Come on, Cam. Thanks, Cam. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to be our time today. I really appreciate you guys coming on. It's Thank been an awesome time. If, if it could go two hours, I would let it. I but think we could. We, we could. We, we've definitely gone over yeah. time, but I, I enjoyed every second. We'll have you guys back. We'll okay. Come back. Thanks, I'm gonna show guys. you what happens after they make their their teams. You know, we got our guys. They're about to do something serious. So just, oh, yeah, just we look out. Follow for up for the guys we're training. That's five. Oh yeah, we'll be here. Yes. And thank you to uh. One Sport RX. Excellent Canada sports Whites. as well. Excellent right. sports, yes. Blackwater. Sports. Humble. Blackwater. They're going to have to pay us for this. Come they on. have to. Put the check. Come on. Put the check. All right, guys. Intelligence, all that. We're going to get out of here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye.